Hey guys, this is Richard from Atomic Fabrication, and uh, I've been wanting to make this video for a while, talking about my uh, heavy-duty belt tensioner setups, um, to hopefully clear up some questions uh, and make sure um, you have the right length belt and everything is adjusted so you can get the most out of it. Um, so first things first, uh, what comes in my kit? So this is one of the the heavy-duty uh, belt tensioners. Um, this is one of the six rib pulleys. I also have it with a um, eight rib pulley or a six rib steel pulley. Uh, it comes with a bracket. Um, here's one not mounted up, uh, so you can see what it looks like. It's three eighths inch thick steel uh, with a spacer. Um, has a spacer tack welded on to fit on the water pump, so it's, n it's nice and easy uh, one piece. Um, this kit is for the truck, the LS truck water pumps. So basically if it looks like this, it has three mounting holes on it. Um, the latest version of my bracket also has a support coming off the head. Let um, me see right there uh, to make sure this thing doesn't uh, move at all. It didn't before but just adding that in there is just a little extra security um, and it's, it's about as solid to the engine as you can get. Uh, have the truck apart right now for some upgrades, so this is a good time to make this video. Um, so if you have one of the uh, older brackets that looks like this, um, this video still applies. Um, and these work just fine. Just uh, wanted to change it up a little bit and add some features to the new one. So the main issue I have is guys probably using the wrong length belt. Um, so I'm going to go over a few things of how to adjust that. So on here now, um, this is a Deco belt, um, 506-0935. Um, this is a stock length belt. Um, so here's a printout of belt links I printed off from the Gates catalog. I know it's a Deco, but same, same basic part numbering. Um, so 35 is a 94 inch belt. I don't know if you can see that, but right below the one starred. From what I could find, the, the 930 one is usually the stock one, but the 935 works too. So I want to demonstrate what this looks like. So when you mount up the tensioner, there are several different uh, key positions on the bracket. The middle one is the one you're going to want to start with. The other ones are there just so you can uh, adjust the position and clocking of the tensioner in a pinch, but the the main one, what this was designed around, is the middle one. So this, the tensioner is already installed just to kind of speed things up. Um, but I also want to note, I already marked on the tensioner uh, different markings. So the, so you can see how much it moves, which makes it a lot easier. You don't have to do this to yours, but um, if you're trying to optimize it, it might come in handy just to be able to visualize where the tensioner is sitting in its travel. So the R is at rest, the F is at full stop. And I try to evenly space different markings through its range to see um, kind of where it's sitting. Uh, so let me back up a little bit. So that's so why do you do this kit? It's mainly for high RPM, naturally aspirated, or uh, supercharged guys, especially uh, LSA or Procharge. Um, the process will be a little bit different with one of those, but uh, the concept is, is kind of the same. What we want to do. Um, basically ensure we get the most most travel in the tension direction of our travel by using the right length belt uh, that we can. So for comparison this is a stock um, truck tensioner. Um, much smaller you can just look at the spring size which is this housing section right here compared to where the markings are on this one. Um, hard to see side by side but the heavy duty one's about twice as thick the second difference uh, is the moment arm from the center of the spring to the center of the pulley. I'm trying to get it straight on. So on the stock pulley, it's an inch, maybe. The stock tensioner is about an inch. Uh, on the heavy duty one, it's probably three inches. So you get a lot more range and travel out of this. What that means is it's a lot, you can soak up a lot more uh, belt stretch with this, which is really what you want because usually when you throw a belt, it's because the tensioner rotates all the way and hits the stop. So it can no longer absorb um, 
you know the slack from the belt as it stretches so as you go up at rpm all your accessories uh, and if you have a supercharger draw more power so the belt will stretch under that load so the job of the tensioner is to take up all that slack to make sure the belt stays tight so my setup um, it's a you know big case alternator with a bigger pulley um, for a high RPM setup, it's an ICT billet accessory bracket. Uh, this is actually an 8 rib Innovators West power steering pulley, uh, which is stock size, um, stock size uh, ATI crank pulley, um, and you know, factory water pump. And this is the pulley that comes with the uh, ICT billet bracket. Uh, this will be similar for a overdrive or underdrive crank pulley, um, but I just have the standard one on here. So, uh, I'll go ahead and put the belt on so you can kind of see, uh, see what it looks like. Uh, all right, through some magic here, got my belt on, there we go. So when you do this, uh, a couple things to note, um, you can see the tensioner sitting at roughly, you know, almost position three on here um, these are roughly 12 degrees apart but you know that's it doesn't have to be precise it's just really for uh, for reference um, so about position three so we started at rest that's all the way which we don't want to get there and it's sitting about at three and this is again a stock stock length belt so the couple things you're going to want to pay attention to because um, you we're going to want a shorter belt you know spoiler uh, is right here you don't want so short of a belt that as this comes down, you know, the angle here starts to hit the top of this, uh, starts to hit the top of the water pump. You don't want these belts to rub. Uh, that'll, that'll be bad. The second thing is you don't want the belt itself to hit the tensioner body. Um, so as the tensioner, you know, rotates this way, you can just imagine this line from the bottom of the crank pulley to the you know, passenger side of the tensioner pulley, that, that'll be a straight line. So you don't want that line to intersect the crank or the tensioner body here. So, um, where do we go from here? So like I said, I would try a shorter belt. You know, if we go back to our reference sheet, so we're at the 935, the 94 inch one. Um, I bought a couple shorter ones to test out. So let's try the the uh, 60915, the 92 and an eighth inch belt, and see what that gives us. So I tried to get a video showing um, how you can tell the, the belt here uh, when it contacts. Uh, the easiest way is to look straight on, but that's obviously hard when the engine's installed. Um, but you can look you know, this direction down there and see when it starts to touch. Uh, on this, it's right, this so happens the length is right at where it, where it touches, but basically where the number, number one position is on here. So basically our, our usable range is from there uh, to the, the full stop, the F. Um, so this is the 92 and 8 inch belt. So it's sitting on here. Now we are um, at about four and a half, you know, which is pretty good, four and a half out of six. Um, so the, our usable range with this belt will be from four and a half all the way to one, you know, which is in terms of belt stretch is a lot. So it's basically from this pulley from going from here to like up here. So it's several inches of belt stretch. Um, So we want to check right here. So we have clearance right there. We have clearance in here. So this will probably be the, the length I go with. We could probably maybe get away with a little bit shorter. So if this is the, let's see, the 92 and an eighth, we could probably go one size up to the 91 and 5 eighths. Um, but really, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this, with this setup here. Um, so, so that's 
what I would look for. So as far as the tensioner position goes, like I said, we'd start out with the middle one. Um, you know, the middle position here. So moving it to one of these other ones, we'll just change the, like the relative position of the range of this. So what happens is we end up with a choice. We can either have it full lock um, and we can only have a, a small usable range or we can rotate this way and risk hitting the stop. So the main thing with a serpentine belt is it pulls, right? This doesn't push. So the crank pulley is dragging all the accessories. And so we want the tensioner as close to the full stop as we can get it, while also giving as much room between the belt and the body as we can. So with it, this horizontal position is going to be the best, the best position, which is why I start, you know, with that middle one. Changing your belt length is going to be the main way that you adjust this. Um, having extra holes is really just to just try to make something work if the belt you want is not available. All right, just to reiterate, what we want to do is have the maximum range of the tensioner usable as we can. So the limits are going to be when the belt hits the body, when these two belts touch, um, or the stops on the actual tensioner body. So it's much better to have it too far this way and it never risk hitting the stop uh, than it is to be to only have this much usable range and hits the stop. When you throw a belt, like when you hit a rev limiter um, or under power, it's usually because the tensioner runs out of range to hit the stop. So you want to keep it as far over here as you can. Um, something else you can do if you need to get more creative is this idler pulley uh, is slightly smaller than a stock stock truck one, um, but you can go even smaller on that. And so what that'll do is that'll improve the angle here because it'll move this up so you can go more like that. Uh, it wasn't really necessary on this setup, but um, you know it's something you can do. But yeah, that's about it. Um, hope this helps.